What's up guys, this is iTweaks here, and today we're going to be talking about the top tweaks of March 2014. So we're also going to be doing something a little bit different, which is a collaboration with Joel from JB Tech 17 Now he does jailbreak tweak videos, tech reviews, and product reviews as well. He even covered Macworld this past weekend, so he's got a lot of coverage of that if you want to check that out too. So I'll be covering my picks for the top tweaks of March in this video, and if you want to check out Joel's picks, then go ahead and click on that link in the description below right after you check out these awesome tweaks. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first tweak I want to talk to you guys about today is called Bouncy. Now this is a brand new tweak that just hit Cydia. It's very simple, it's free, and it's really cool. So what it does, as you can see here, if we go to my lock screen, and when I unlock the device, you're going to see this animation as those icons land on that springboard. It has that bouncing effect. Now it's also going to take place when you open up a folder, as you can see right there as well as when you open up any type of application. Now the only thing that I wish that Bouncy included was when you're closing out of a folder here and it would bounce right there as well as when you hit the home button in an application if it would bounce right there then that'd really be awesome. But that's basically all that it does right now. Hopefully in an update they can add those features right there but still this is a really cool tweak. Alright, so the next tweak I want to talk to you guys about is called Dock and Roll. Now, if you saw my previous review of this, it was probably called something different. It started out with Barrel Dock, and then it was Dock Flow, and now it's hopefully and finally it's called Dock and Roll. So this is a really cool tweak. It gives you the ability to add animations to your dock, as you can see right there. It's not going to give you the ability to add that fifth icon that I have down there. This is due to InfiniDock. So if you want to add additional icons, then you're not going to be able to do so with Dock. Dock and roll, but dock and roll is going to allow you to add these awesome animations as you can see right here. So if we go into the settings panel here, you can see that you have your switches. You have enabled, you have continuous, so this is going to allow you to continuously scroll through your dock rather than getting to one end and then having to go back to the beginning and start over like that. This is going to make the dock loop. So right here we also have allow paging and you can remove the dock labels if you want to do that. You can also center the icon when it's selected. So the best way to explain that is just by showing you right here. If I wanted to open up Safari, if I tap on that, it's going to automatically center and then open right up just like that. So let's go back into the settings here and scroll down here. Now you can change the icon spacing as well and this is actually very important depending on what animation you're using because some animations just don't look right unless you change up the icon spacing to make it look right. Now down here you also have scroll speed so you can slow that down if you want to just by sliding that down. You also have perspective. Now this is only going to take effect or be effective for cover flow as well as time machine so you can slide that up and down as well so right here is where the cool stuff starts this is where you're going to be able to change the mode so you have here this is linear now I'm not going to go through all of these but I'm still going to show you some of them so let's go into the settings here and we'll go back into the modes and rotary is actually what I had previously what I started out uh, showing you where it was just spinning in a circle like that inverted rotary is basically the same thing except you're inside cylinder actually looks a little bit different you can see what that looks like right there so it's spinning except the faces of the icons actually don't rotate they just stay in place like that so they're always facing forward so if we tap on this again and scroll down to mode Inverted cylinder is basically the same thing except you're inside of the cylinder. Wheel is actually pretty cool. So if we do the wheel, you can see that it spins just like that. Now the step up and roll away, I think that's what it's called, step, in, step up and away maybe. If we go back in here, that's basically the same thing except the icons are turned just a little bit. And I'll go ahead and show you that right here. So it kind of looks like a windmill as they're spinning. Now something to keep in mind about this tweak is you don't really want to try to uh, rotate these or spin them or go through them by tapping on the icon like that. You want to use the open space as you can see right there. Now if it takes up the entire space right here then just go ahead and do it right up here pretty much right under those page dots as you can see. So let's go back here to settings now we also have cover flow, which you guys are probably aware of what it looks like, and flippy, which actually doesn't look too good. I'm not going to show you that one. Roll away, which is actually pretty cool. If we tap on that, you can see that the icons just roll across the dock right there. And if we open it back up once again, we scroll down here to time machine, and we're going to change the perspective all the way up, and you can see what that does right there. So that actually looks pretty cool too. 
So definitely check out Dock and Roll. Now the next tweak here is an oldie but a goodie and it's called Type Status. This was fully upgraded to be compatible with iOS 7 this month. And what this allows you to do is see when someone is typing to you. So you can see here if I start to type to myself, then I'll get that little overlay right there that says typing and it says from who. So it's directly from me. And you'll see that I just go ahead and send myself a message. You also have a few options here. So if we go down here to type status, now keep in mind that you will have to add a uh, repo for this. This is not going to be in the default repo. Just go ahead and, and make sure that you add the repo in the description below as well as what I put on the screen at the beginning of this uh, segment. And right here we have all of our options and toggles. Now I'm not going to go into incredible detail in all these but we will quickly go through them just for the sake of time but here we have the status bar icon so obviously if you toggle that on you're gonna get a status bar icon right up here you also have a status bar overlay now this is basically you get to choose between one or the two so you can see if I toggle that on then this one goes off but the status bar overlay is the main thing or the main feature of the tweak where it has that overlay that says so and so is typing or if they have read receipts on then it's going to say the message has been read by so and so you also have hide text after delay so this is going to hide the text after the delay you can also hide inside messages so when you're inside the messages app it's not going to show that overlay right up there in the status bar down here this is what I was talking about the read receipt so you have some options right there as well so if we tap that you can see what that looks like you also have overlay display duration so you can change how long this is actually up there if you want it to be longer or shorter then you would just hit those uh, plus and minus buttons accordingly down here we have overlay animation so you can change the way that the animation comes in you can have a slide or a fade right there so we'll just do the fade now and tap test read you can see that it just fades in just like that so if you always want to know when somebody's typing to you then definitely check out type status it's free it's functional and it looks really nice so definitely check this out Next up we have IntelliScreen X7. So this is going to have a ton of functionality and basically keeps you from having to unlock your device for almost any information on your phone. So you can see as we scroll through here this is basically the notification center so you can go through all your notifications here you can tap on them to open them up as you can see right there if I tap it's going to give you a preview right there. Now if we swipe over to the left and you can see that you have these nodules so if we want to tap on one of these buttons then you can see here this is obviously the home. We'll swipe it over again and we can open up just our mail as you can see right there and that's going to load right there. If we swipe over again we want to open up Twitter then it's going to open up our Twitter feed and I mean you have options right here so if you tap on that you can open this in the application. You can reply, you can retweet, you can open up the link. You can also change it from the timeline to mentions if you just tap that then you can see all your mentions right here. You can even tweet straight from the lock screen so you can see that right there so if we tap on this again you can see you have all your options in the mention area as well so if we go over here and we tap on Facebook I actually don't have Facebook configured but basically you have all the features that you would assume you can see your Facebook timeline as well as post you can like post if you want to do that as well over here you have your RSS feeds which I don't actually use either but you can set this up and it's going to give you all your RSS feeds and you can tap on these and it's going to open up this right here as you can see right there if I tap on that then it's going to open it up right there and you can read that directly from your lock screen now if we swipe from the top left you can see that this is a, another tweak and it's called slider so if we tap right here and we pull that over you can see that it's not going to unlock just because I have my uh, passcode enabled right there but if I go ahead and open that up you can see that it automatically unlocks to the settings. So the cool thing about sliders, it's not only accessible on the lock screen. You can do this on your home screen or anywhere on your device. So you can see right here, all you need to do is pull that down and then you can swipe over just like that to open up an application. It's very simple. So you can see right here, let's just open up uh, Safari right here. So it automatically opens that up right there for you. Now you also have your IntelliScreen X settings. Now I did a complete review of this tweak in another video, so I'm not gonna go into too in depth, but you can go ahead and check out that video if you want to, and I'll put a link in the description below for you guys. So you have a kill switch right here. You also have enabled on the lock screen. So if you don't want it to be on the lock screen, you can uh, disable that as well. You also have visible IntelliScreen X pages. So since I don't use an RSS feed, then what I could do is just tap edit and drag this down to the hidden because I don't ever use it. 
but I mean you can rearrange these if you want to as well you can scroll down here you have some more options for your general configuration like lock screen dim your lock screen and blur and tint your weather your HUD settings and going down here you have your lock display behavior I mean there's a ton of different settings and here's some of your slide settings as well so you can all configure this all within the IntelliScreen X app settings right here and then once you've done that then you'll be good to go you also have it in your notification center so you can see right here there's a ton of different stuff right here you have your uh, little tabs right here that you can go through and that is all IntelliScreen X you also have your widget right there for your weather if you tap on it it actually gives you a hourly forecast right there and this is your five-day forecast so if you want a ton of information just at your fingertips then go ahead and check out IntelliScreen X7 so next we have the highly anticipated color keyboard for iOS 7. This was a huge hit back on iOS 6 and it was just updated for iOS 7 this past month. So what it does is theme your keyboard in a whole lot of different ways. So you can see right here, this is the settings panel and you can enable or disable it right here. You also have select theme. So this is where you're going to select all your themes. Now you can download separate themes as well, but this comes with a ton of different themes as you can see right here. This is the only custom one that I have. All these ones with eyes on it are actually come directly with the theme. And if you want to get a preview of it, then all you would do is tap on that eye and it's going to show you exactly what these keyboards look like. So once you've selected a keyboard theme, then all you need to do is make sure that it has a check mark on it. And we're going to check out Vector OS because this actually came with a winter board theme that I downloaded and I haven't even checked this keyboard out so we're gonna see what that looks like and we're gonna scroll down here to customize background so if you want to you can customize the background of your keyboard so you just toggle on uh, iPhone alert right here so enable the custom background then you can select your portrait background so when your phone is in portrait mode then this is the background that the keyboard is going to have now this is a custom picture that I added these are the ones that it comes with the green pink and uh, silver right there which are actually uh, incredibly ugly in my opinion but you can go down here as well I added this one so this is what it's going to look like in landscape mode so let's go ahead and tap save well before we tap save let's go down here to theme gallery and show you that real quick this is going to give you some more themes right here but they're not actually installed in color keyboard so if you want to actually download these and you will just scroll down to the bottom and it's going to tell you how to get it so this one's actually on Cydia so you can just search IMAT Lightwood if you want to get that theme so they're gonna have directions on how to get those specific uh, keyboards right there alright so now we're resprung let's go ahead and unlock our device here and we're going to pull down our spotlight here and you can see exactly what that looks like so if I open up my messages here and we wanted to check out what our keyboard looks like in landscape mode you can see that it automatically changes to that background that I changed and the keys obviously look different this is going to be the vector OS keyboard so there's a ton of different keyboards that you can download and customize to your liking with color keyboard for iOS 7 so those are my top picks for the month of March. Don't forget to go and check out Joel's top five tweaks as well. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description below. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you want to see more of my videos, then go ahead and subscribe. All right, guys, until next time, peace.